What's going on, everybody? It's your favorite Auntie Mo, and we are back for another episode review of Power. Who Lord? This is season six, episode eight, Deal with the Devil. Before we get into the review, if you have not done so just yet, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think about this video with a thumbs up or a thumbs down. And then hit the notification bell so you will know whenever I upload new content. Y'all, if you've watched the episode already, you already know how good it was. If this is going to be your recap of watching it because you missed the episode, if by chance you don't want no spoilers, then you might as well turn off this shit right here. But hell, if you don't already been on social media, you know this episode went down. I'm going to try not to make this review long, but y'all know I like to give y'all every little bit of detail. So, hopefully y'all are ready for the review because I'm ready to give it to you. So, let's get right on up into it. All right, y'all. Moscato, I got fancy pull of strawberries in it. Let's get right on up into it. Okay, so Dre ends up approaching Sax. And Sax is walking down the street. Now, y'all remember, Sax is on administrative leave because he's under investigation for all the cricket shit he was doing, right? So Dre ends up rolling up on Sax, telling him, like, look here, you need to take this ankle bracelet off of me. Sax, like, hold on, you need to back up. You got any information for me about James St. Patrick or Tommy Egan? He like, nah, man, the hell with all of that. You ain't got nothing else on me. You need to take this ankle bracelet off of me. Sax, like, look here. Until you can give me some information, you're going to be my little pound puppy still. I'm still going to have your ass chipped up. You'll take it. I'll take it off when she finds some information for me about ghosts and about Tommy. Then he walks off from Dre, right? Dre pissed off. Dre calls Ghost and I'm like, look here. I need you to uh, take care of Sax. As soon as Ghost answered the phone, no, he like, look here. Why the hell didn't you show up to the meeting last night? And how come Tommy was the one that showed up? Dre tells him, because Tommy and your boys rolled up on me. And besides that, I can't go to Jason when I got the feds watching me now because they done put this damn ankle bracelet on me. So Tommy, um, Ghost gonna tell Dre, as long as you chipped up like a dog, me and you ain't got no more business. Like, I don't need you nowhere around me. Dre is like, look here, it's about this fool sex. I need you to take sex out. Ghost like, look here, law enforcement is strictly off duty. And like I said, as long as you round here, got a dog tag on you, me and you ain't got no more business. Hung up on his ass. Don't do Dre like that, because y'all know Dre is a, he's a snitch. He's a snitch. He's a sneak disser. That's the wrong dude to do dirty. Hell, even if you do right, he gonna do your ass dirty. So Dre went and kept it in the back of his mind. He like, all right, I'm gonna get this motherfucker. Keisha, Tommy, and Cash are in their new house. You know, they done moved out there to the sticks. They're in the suburbs now. They in the city, so it ain't all loud with sirens and gunshots and all of that going on, right? So they trying to adjust to the new house. Now, Keisha is helping Cash do his homework, right? They're in there, and so Tommy walks in, and she's like, you know, how you like the new place? So y'all loving it? Woof -de -woof. She's like, yeah, but you hear that? Like, it's quiet. We got to get used to everything. Tommy's like, I thought this is what she wanted, was for Cash to grow up in a nice neighborhood. She's like, yeah, I'm not being unappreciative. We just got to get used to it, right? So Tommy and Keisha have a conversation with Cash, letting him know, like, look here. We're in a new neighborhood. We're not like how it was in the city. So how you used to walk to school back and forth, I'm going to drop you off, and either me and Tommy going to pick you up one of the other he like well how come i can't walk back and forth they like look here the way you look you a young black man in this white neighborhood you got all strikes against you so in order to avoid that i'm gonna drop you off and either me or tommy gonna pick you up tommy then tells cash look here him and cash are tight he called cash cash money you know what i'm saying he like that's tommy hopefully step daddy one day you know they tight they like this so tommy tells cash look here if anybody messes with you anybody does anything to you you don't feel safe you come let me know and i handle it cash was like all right you show sure? right i got you i was like oh shit mm -mm. y'all so sax goes and meets with tamika y'all remember tamika she was the black former usda AUSA, LMNOP, whatever the hell she was. She was the one that they used as scapegoat and they fired her, right? So, Sax goes and meets with her. I think she's working at a law firm or something right now. And basically, she like, what's up with all this illegal mess that she was doing? And now your ass is on administrative leave. They looking at you sideways like, what the hell? He like, look here. I know for a fact that Tommy Egan was the one that killed Joseph Proctor. I just need to prove that. And I know that either Ghost or Tommy killed Angela. I just need to be able to prove that. Tamika telling him, look here. If you don't prove that, 
You already know, prosecution finna go after your ass with everything. Everything, everything. And it ain't even a matter of maybe if you gonna go to jail, it's gonna be what jail you go to. So, what I'm gonna need you to do is get all the information you can, be able to prove some kind of way that Tommy Egan was the one that actually killed Proctor, and then we can move on from there. So, Reek is at his new school, Callister Prep, right? It's his first day there, he's doing a tour around the school. As he's doing a tour, Sax comes to the damn school like I incognito that popped up on him. And immediately, Tariq knew who he was. He was like, yeah, you was the prosecutor in my dad's trial. He was like, yeah, AUSA Sax or whatever he said his name was. He was like, yeah, he's like, oh, so you also know that, um, oh, I know that you were the one that left the door open so Tommy Egan could get in there and he could kill Proctor. He was like, uh, Tariq was like, well, I know it's, as le it's illegal as fuck for you to be here talking to me and my parents ain't around. So how about I go call them? Soon as he said that, Sax kind of backed off a little bit. He was like, oh, okay, this kid is smart. So when Sax leaves from there, this fool goes to Lakeisha. Lakeisha pulling up to the house. He come rolling in behind her. She like, look here, whatever the hell you want, I don't know nothing. I'm gonna need you to move the hell around. He like, look here, we got enough information that we know if if this house was bought with any illegal drug money, we could take this house away from you. You could go to jail. You could be implicated in this, this, not the other. Now, y'all know, Keisha not built for this life. So you could already see her slowly starting to break down a little bit. She held her own, though. She told him, look here, if you ain't got no warrant, you finna have to move the hell around. And so he ended up leaving from there, but I'm like, Keisha... This bitch gonna end up getting everybody caught up because y'all know Keisha ain't about that life. She ain't about that life. So Reek is in class. Ain't nobody really in the class paying attention, right? The teacher is just talking, but ain't nobody really paying attention. So the teacher ends up calling on Tyreek, like kind of random out of the blue, because Tyreek was bored as hell in that class. He was actually further ahead at Choate. So the class, I mean, the school he's at now, um, Callister Prep, they're kind of behind Choate. So everything is just really boring to him because he already knows everything, right? So after class, the teacher tells Tyreek, hey, I need you to hang back for a little bit, right? The teacher gonna tell Reek, are you holding? Tyreek was like, what? What the hell are you talking about? He was like, yeah, well, I got a friend that works at Choke. He told me that you got kicked out for selling drugs. So, uh, let me see your backpack. This fool ends up going all looking through his backpack like he looking for something. Now, when I first seen him, before he even did that, I said, this fool looked like him. He looked like he's some old pill popping, white powder snorting, Maybe shoot up in your arm ass. Just something. He looked real dishuffled, like real frazzled as hell. So Reed gets back to the shop, right? He tells Tasha about what happened with his teacher. He also tells Tasha um, about Keisha telling Tommy that he was the one that stole some product from him, right? Now, when he gets back, you know, he got money or whatever. And so Keisha takes out, I mean, not Keisha, Tasha takes out the money. So she basically starts teaching him the game. Like, okay, you got to pay this. This ain't your money because you got to pay these people. You got to pay your premieres. You got to pay your soldiers. You got to re-up. You got to get more product. whoop de whoop whatever, right? So she's just like teaching him like the money part of the game. Just then, oh, wait, back up though. He told Tasha, like I said, about his teacher hitting him up and looking through his backpack. So he was like, you know, he could be a good premiere for us. But mama was like, hold on, we're going to have to check that out. Tasha was like, just see what you can find out about him and then come back and let me know. And then I'll let you know if we can do the go ahead on that, right? Just then is when Tasha's mama bust in on the office, right when they got all this money on the table, right? So she hurry up and put the money up because mama was there to pick up Yaz that we don't ever see. We only see Yaz like once a season. Poor little baby Yaz. But did y'all know Yaz was twins? She like an Olsen twin around here. I did not know that till I seen their Instagram page. That's a whole twin out here. Didn't even know that. <sighs> Fucking mind blowing. Anyways, she t Tasha tells Reek, okay, I'll go get your tuition check, uh, your tuition check from your daddy. Just trying to get him on out of there, right? Y'all, excuse me. Y'all already know how them Scott will get your auntie. Just then, Tasha mom was like, uh-uh, Tasha, what is all of this? What you doing with this money? This, that, and the other. She was like, um, I don't want you losing Reek the same way you lost Raina to these streets. This, that, and the other. Tasha like, mama, I already lost him. I'm just trying to do whatever I can to, like, stay good with him just so I can keep him on my side so he don't lie to me. This, that, and the other. Mama gonna say the only thing that can save him is Jesus. All right, now.
Hallelujah. That's an old school praying woman right there because regardless of what, she thinks Jesus is going to fix it. Hmm. So Reed goes over to Ghost to get his tuition check. Y'all forgot I got this little fan from a co-worker. Y'all probably can't see it. Got lemon on it. Mmm. Lemonade, bitch. But he goes over there to the club because Ghost is in there. He goes there to get his tuition check, right? Just then, Ramona walks in. And y'all know Ramona loves everything about Ghost, baby, Jane St. Patrick. So she said he bragging on him to Tyreek. It's like, oh, hopefully we can get your father in here. He can be a politician one day. whoop de whoop Tyreek was like, all right whatever but when he came right before she came in ghost was telling tyreek that you know he's got all these plans for the queen's child project that he wants to uh, um open up this little basketball court there and he wants to name it after tyreek tyreek really don't give a damn tyreek is so far gone all he worried about is this drug game he don't give a damn about what's going on with that but child he didn't give a damn about now ramona was saying ramona was like hopefully one day we can get your father on the ballot he was like i <laughs> Little motherfucker. So Saxons are popping up over Blanca's house. Child, Blanca and her wife end up opening the door. I was like, ah, Blanca. Go on, taste you some of that rainbow girl. Okay. So um, Sax tells Blanca that Keisha and Tommy's name are both on the deed to the house. So he's like, if we can get her some kind of way, flip her on Tommy, maybe we can get her to say what she knows about hopefully Tommy Egan being the killer of Proctor. Now, Blanca tells Sex that she pulled the surveillance because she was suspicious. Somehow or another, I missed that part, but she was suspicious about Kane in some kind of way. I think she, like, is getting back into the whole Ray Ray case. I think they found a droplet of DNA there, but they don't have nobody to match it to, right? Now, she said that Keisha was supposedly the witness for Kanan and for Reek for them not being there when Raymond got killed. Ray Ray Jones got killed, right? So Sax is hoping that he can get Blanca to work with him on the low. So hopefully she can help him bring down Tommy Egan and maybe try to bring his little reputation back. Because you notice, like I said, this fool is suspended. And he's a steady digging himself deeper and deeper in a goddamn hole. This fool, Sax, I'm sorry. He need to be the next one to go. Because Sax is doing way too goddamn much. Now Blanca asks um, Sax, like, how did he get this information? You know, because the only witness that she thought they had was Dre, Andre Coleman. She thought that Sax let him get away. Now, Sax gave Blanca this serial number to Dre's ankle bracelet. and was like, here, you can find him here. Even Blanca was like, damn, like, what all kind of shit was you doing? As long as you can get to Dre, you flip him, get some information from him, then we can flip Keisha, and then Keisha can let us know what she knows about Tommy. This fool, whoo, this fool Sax, he got to go. He got to go. So Blanca ends up tracking Dre to this restaurant. He's there with his daughter, right? Soon as she walk in, he was like, look here, man, I ain't got nothing to say to y'all. He like, look here. All I need you to do is take this ankle bracelet off of me. And she was like, look, I know that Sax has been into a bunch of whole, you know, other illegal stuff. Whoop de whoop. What I need is your help. He like, look here. The only way I'm going to help you is if you take this ankle bracelet off of me. She was like, okay, well, look here. I have reason to believe that Kanan was the one that may have killed Raymond Jones. Dre is like, no, it couldn't have been Kanan because Kanan was in D.C. the night of the murder. Blanca gonna say, well, we have a witness that says otherwise. Dre is like, well, that witness is lying. She's like, okay, well, who did it? He said, look here, you gonna have to do me a favor. Not only are you gonna have to take this ankle bracelet off, but I need you to get that bitch fool sex back for what he did to me and my daughter. Blanca's like, don't even worry about it. He's got such a bad rap at the station. Nobody believes the word that he says anyway. So don't even worry about it. He said, all right, it was Tyreek St. Patrick. This motherfucker, Dre, I said, God damn, when I tell you Blanca, mine was, oh, I, it's like, you know, Dre is a snitch, but then when you see him snitch, you like, damn, you a snitch. Ooh, y'all. So Tate is getting ready for the New York Democratic debate, right? Him and Ramona are backstage talking. The commentator, her name is Sunny. She comes up and she's actually going around to all the candidates, just getting a little bit of, you know. Little chit chat about, you know, what do you think about this? What do you think about that right before they start the debate, right? Now, just then, Ramona asked Tate, how would he feel about putting James, St. Patrick, ghost? Now, when he's, 
When he's on a straight and narrow, I call him James. When he on that hood shit, I call him J Ghost. So you're going to see me going back and forth. James to Ghost. Today, he's James. Right now, he's James. So Ramona was like, how would you feel about James being on the ticket with you? He quickly shot that shit down because you already know. He don't like Ghost and he don't want nothing to do with Ghost. He don't like Ghost. He don't like James. He don't like nothing to do with his ass, right? Just then... James ends up walking in and he's got Derek with him. Now you remember Derek caught him banging his old lady last episode, right? Soon as he walk in, Tate like, is what is this fool doing with you? He was like, oh, he's with me. You know, we're going to be working on the Queen Child Project, whoop de whoop, right? Soon as he says that, Tate is like, now James, you know I don't give a damn about that project. The only reason why you doing whoop de whoop da 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 Soon as he's talking all this mess night. Now hold on, before I get to that, the lady, like I said, Sunny the commentator, she was going around to all the candidates asking them questions. Now, Tate is watching as Sunny is talking to one of the female candidates that's across the way, right? I guess Tate don't like who that woman is that Sunny is talking to. So, back to now. When Derek walks, when Derek and Ghost both walk up to Tate, that's when Derek, um, Derek overhears Tate talking to Ghost, saying that he don't give a damn about the Queen's Child Project, that these candidates don't know this, that, and the other, and they don't give a damn about this, that, and the other. As soon as he's saying that, Derek is like standing behind and he's listening to the conversation. You see this fool's earrings kind of perk up like, what this fool just say? Then you see him kind of go off. He goes and talks to the sound man, right? Mind you, Tate is just going off, talking crap about all the candidates, talking shit up, be I mean, cash money shit. Just then, it's echoing all over the hall where the debate is being held. This fool talking shit. Then he starts going in on the female candidate that Sonny was talking to, talking about she don't know how to use her iPhone unless her assistant helps her, how she an idiot, she this, this, that, and the other. Next thing you know, Ramona's like, oh my damn God, because by then, everybody is like, y'all hear this fool? What the hell is he saying? He talking about me? He said something about my mama? Everybody getting pissed off. Ramona runs up to Tate. Who in the hell turned your microphone on? He like, what? What you talking about? This fool runs out, everybody out there looking like, I know this bitch didn't. He was talking shit about me. He said something about me and my alpha. Oh, I got some for his black ass. Baby, he looked dumb as hell. Next thing you know, you see James kind of walk off. He got a little smirk on his face. He looks out over the crowd, looks up at the sound booth area. Derek is right there with the sound man. Both James and Derek look at each other, give each other a head nod, and they both go their separate directions. They set that motherfucker up, and I was so damn happy they set his ass up too. That's what you get you. Now, later on, Ramona tells Tay, look here, you need to go ahead and drop on up out this thing. You got all these white folks mad at you. Tay, like, I'm not, ain't no way I'm finna drop out of this. Mm -mm, we're not finna do it. So Ramona's like, the only chance you got of maybe getting back in good is if you get Ghost on a campaign ticket with you. Now, at first he was opposed to it, but now his ass is in his hands. He don't know what the hell to do. So, of course, he gonna send Ramona over to talk to Ghost because he's hoping if he gets Ghost on the ticket, that's gonna smooth shit over. Baby, you don't already piss these white folks off. They don't give a damn about what you got to say. So Reek's teacher is leaving for the day, right? Reek waits for him to leave out his classroom, out the building. Reek goes and sneaks in the classroom. Ends up going through his bags and his desk and finding a bunch of overdue, past due notices and bills and shit with some lady named Josephine Bulkner on it, right? So he ends up going back and telling Tasha, like, look here, I know why he, he hit me up trying to see what I got. He's in debt and he needs some money. Some about his step I mean, his parents were doing some kind of scam. His dad ended up committing suicide before he got arrested, and the mama ended up doing 30 years. So now he's stuck with all they debt from that. So Tasha was like, how did you end up finding this information out? Reek ended up telling her he broke into the class because Kanan taught him how to do goddamn B&E. Goddamn. So she mad at him about that, but she was like, look here, I don't want him to know that he going to be working for us. So they got a plan for his ass, right? Later on, what they end up doing, once again, he leaving for the end of the day, right? He goes out to his car, put his stuff in his trunk, and as he opened up his trunk, he see a bunch of little baggies in there and a cell phone. And it says, leave the money in the trunk once all of this is gone. So he texts the number back and was like, who do I know who I'm working for? And then somebody texts back and say, you don't, right? 
So he gets in the car and he leaves. And as he's leaving, he sees Tyreek walking down a little street, you know. And so he pulls over to Tyreek. He's like, hey, Reek, was that you? Tyreek was like, what you talking about? He was like, oh, oh okay, nothing. He drives off. Reek pulls the phone out his goddamn pocket. I knew that was goddamn Reek ass that did that. Boy, when I tell you, they some slick motherfuckers. They some slick motherfuckers. So Keisha and Cash are riding home from school, right? She asking him how did his day go? Did he make any friends? He not really saying too much. He's real quiet, right? Next thing you know, she ends up getting pulled over. She nervous as hell. Nervous in a hook in church. Who the hell is pulling her over? It's Blanca. Blanca tells her to step out the car. Then she brings somebody from child services over to get cash out the car too. Keisha like, what the hell is you grabbing my son for? Baby, Blanca got in this bitch head. We know that Tommy Egan is using your shop to watch his illegal drug money. His name is on the LLC. We know that both of y'all names is on the deed to the house. And if it was brought with illegal drug money, we're going to take that house. We can have social services take your son. He ain't going to be with you. He going to be in the foster care system. He ain't going to go with his old convict ass daddy. We're going to end up taking your ass to jail. If you don't sign this agreement right here, this is immunity agreement that you will give over all the information that you know about Tommy Egan. Now, at first, the bitch was cool. She was holding her own, right? But then, goddamn, Blanca broke her ass. Oh, Blanca broke her ass down. She was like, look here. Okay, fine. You don't want to sign it? We'll hold on to cash. Keisha like, no, 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 no. Give me the paper. Give me the paper. This bitch signed the damn witness protection paper. Now, she telling her, thank you for your cooperation. Um... Federal marshals will be there to pick you up later on today. We're going to take you in Woodsag or um, Witness Protection Program. Thank you for your time. They end up letting Cash go. Cash runs over there to Keisha. She like, look here. Don't tell anybody about what happened right now. I mean, don't say nothing to nobody. Do you understand me? He said, yes, mama, I understand. What this little motherfucker do? Soon as Tommy go and drop his ass off in basketball practice, he looking out. Tommy was like, what's wrong with you? You ain't said two words. He's like, um, can I tell you something, Tommy? Tommy's like, yeah, sure. What's up? You can tell me anything. Well, the police pulled mom over when she picked me up from school today. And the police made her get out of the car. And this other lady got me and made me sit in the back of the car. And the police was yelling at her. And they made mama cry. And then the police let me go. But mama told me not to say anything. Did I do the right thing? No, your mother. No, you didn't. You didn't. You weren't supposed to say nothing. Damn it. But you can see that looking crazy in Tommy's eyes. Tommy was like, you did right, kid. You did right. Go ahead on over there play you some basketball. I said, oh, he finna go kill this bitch. So as soon as he get back to the house, Keisha's there. He's like, okay, so tell me about your day. How was your day? She was like, oh, it was good. He was like, oh, nothing eventful. Nothing happened. No, it was a good ass day. This fool dropped a whole case of glasses he had. He was like, bullshit. Cash told me about the laws pulling y'all over. Now, you had to have gave them something to let you go. Now, what the hell did you tell them? I didn't tell them nothing, Tommy. I don't know what you're talking about. He was like, don't you fucking lie to me. I know you told them something. She said, I didn't tell them nothing. Just like I didn't say nothing to Sax when he came here the day before. Just like I ain't said nothing about nothing because I told you you can trust me. He was like, well, why the hell wasn't you going to tell me then? She was like, because I didn't want to end up like Holly because I know you killed her. This fool like, oh, hell. How long have you known that? He was. She said, I've known this since yesterday when Kate came here trying to scare me off. And Tommy's like, so you know all of that and you still here? She was like, yes, I'm still here. I told you I love you, Tommy. I'm trying to be a hustler's wife. That right there made Tommy fall in love. He was like, oh, she a real ass bitch. She know I killed my last bitch and she still love me, scared. That she know I could kill her anytime, but she love me still. Oh, he in love now. He in love. But then she asked him, Tommy, can I ask you something? Why are both of our names on the deed to the house? He was like, baby, this house is paid off because I wanted, if anything ever happened to me, you and Cash would be straight. Y'all wouldn't have to worry about nothing. Now the bitch feeling guilty. You about to sell his ass up the river and this fool got a whole house paid for for your big head ass. Oh, God. So Ghost is at his club and he gets a call from Tommy. Tommy pissed. He ready to go take sex out. But like Ghost is saying, look here, law enforcement is off duty. I can't talk right now. So Tommy pissed off, whatever, right? Just then, Blanca ends up walking in. Now, mind you, Ghost is sitting at the bar, 
having a drink, mind his own damn business. Blanca walks in. She was like, so Mr. St. Patrick, we got some more information in the Proctor murder trial. And I just want to know if you know any information. He like, no, because I got to go. I ain't got time for all of this. She said, well, just to let you know, we got a witness in the case that says that they know that Tyreek was there the night of the murder for Raymond Jones. He like, look here. Look here. Y'all damn officers been harassing the hell out of my family, especially this fool, Sax. Has he told you that he went up to my son, school, and did none of us know about it? Blanca says, Mr. St. Patrick, you won't have to worry about that because Sax's reputation is ruined at the law enforcement. Nobody will believe a thing that he says anyway. I'm here to question you. He was like, well, look here. You ain't got nothing to say to me. You have you a good ass day. He walks out. Leaves the fucking cup that he was drinking on the bar. Blanca gets the cup so she can go have it sampled for DNA evidence. As she's walking out to the car to bag up the damn DNA that she got, she gets a phone call from Keisha. Hi, um, this is Lakeisha. Um, I lied. I don't have no information about Tommy. I don't know anything. Block is like, well, um, Keisha, it's too late. We have federal marshals on their way to come get you right now. There's no way you can back out of it now. We finna take you to Woodside. She's like, oh, no, don't come now. My son is at basketball camp. Let me pick him up, and I'll meet y'all there later on. She was like, okay, but just know, Keisha, if you back out of this, your immunity deal is null and void. She's like, shit, I know. I'll be there. Damn. So Blanca ends up getting a 50% match of the DNA from Ghost being it male so that would make that match his son Tyreek and so she goes and she shows it to Warner right and now she's saying that now they come try to get Keisha to flip because now they know that Keisha was the alibi for Reek and they know that she lied because now that they found Reek DNA or well, could be his 50% match male duh it could be his DNA so now they want to get Keisha like I said to flip on Tommy and on Reek now, later on, Blanca ends up going and meets with Sax because that's another thing. Blanca ends up telling Warren. No, she doesn't meet with Sax. She ends up meeting with Dre. But Blanca ends up telling Warren that she got a lot of interesting information about things that Sax has been doing under, under the radar, all this down low shit he's been doing, right? So later on, Blanca ends up meeting up with Dre, has Dre sign a formal complaint against um, Sax, and she cuts the ankle bracelet off of Dre, so now supposedly he's free and clear. They ain't got nothing else on him, but I still don't trust his So ass. Ghost ends up having a change of heart when Blanca mentions something about Sax having some information as well about Reek, right? So No, about Tommy. I think it was Reek. Anyways, so Tommy and Ghost ends up going, busting in on Sax's apartment. He in there beating his meat, watching the dog on flick. They end up busting in there, beating his ass, Talking all kind of crap to him, right? Basically, long story short, they had to kill his ass. So they strap him up to a chair, put a bag over his head. He starts telling him that basically the feds got information about Tyreek. So Ghost is like, well, what else do they know about Reek? Like, tell me everything that they know. And they're like, well, they know that, you know, he supposedly killed Raymond Jones. And they know this and the other, blah, 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 blah. So Ghost ends up stopping Tommy right before Tommy was getting ready to kill his ass. He was getting ready to suffocate his ass. But Tom, uh, Ghost ends up stopping him right before. He was like, look here, we can use his ass. He can be a mule for us. Let us know everything that's going on with the investigation. And he was like, besides, ain't nobody going to believe anything that he says any damn way. So he's we going to let his ass go. He was like, look here, any information you got about Tyreek and anybody else got anything to do with me, you need to come and let me know. I'm going to come back and I'm going to kill your ass, right? Baby, later on, this fool Warren ends up calling Sax into the office. Sax tries to tell that Ghost and Tommy end up kicking in the door and pistol whipped him and that Tommy confessed to killing Angela. Of course, Warren don't believe a goddamn thing that he says. He shows him a complaint against Dre, tells him your ass is fired. Your services are no longer needed. And that's exactly, and he ended up getting that from Blanca. That see, that damn ghost was smart. He kept holding that. So now, sex ass is fired. So now I got a feeling that this motherfucker is going to end up going rogue on his own trying to figure out who the hell killed Angela and Proctor and every damn body else. Donovan, 
Angela, he mean that it's like he finna go rogue. So Ghost ends up calling Tasha and telling Tasha, did you know that Reek used a fake ID to go and pick up Kanan's ashes? And Tasha's like, well, why would he do that? She's like, I don't know. He also tells her about Keisha getting stopped by the feds. And he was like, look here, you need to go and holler at your homegirl because she done got stopped and uh, we need to make sure that our alibi sticks, right? Just then, she ends up getting a knock at the door says she got to call him back. It's Blanca ass like, these motherfuckers is everywhere. Blanca tells her that they end up getting a droplet of blood from Ray Ray's apartment when he got killed that night and they're hoping that they can match that back to Tyreek. Now she also tells Tasha that they got a witness that says that Tyreek and um, Kanan, they were not where the alibi said that they were the night of Raymond Jones' murder. So automatically, Tasha's thinking that it's Keisha. Since Ghost said that Keisha ass got picked up by the feds, I was like, oh... Yeah, that's gonna go down. Later on, child, Ghost ends up going to the Tate headquarters. He was supposed to have been there earlier for Tate to have a chance to be in front of the media and take pictures and all that in hopes to get his chance back in the running. But, child, Ghost ended up showing up to that because he was over there with Tommy kicking sacks ass. So, Tate in there drinking all his goddamn sorrows away. It's funny as hell. He ends up telling him that basically he's out of the running. Ain't no more Queen's Child Project than, um... You kiss my ass. Ain't no more ties between me and you. Now, that pissed Ghost off because you know that QPC was supposed to be uh, Ghost's baby. And now, ain't no more of that. I got a feeling he gonna come back and he gonna try to get Tate ass. Or Tate gonna try to take his ass down in some kind of way. But we ain't seen the last of Tate. Not at all. Not at all. So, y'all, Tommy goes and picks up cash after practice. They go to the mall. Tommy wants to buy Keisha a ring because he wants to propose to her and he wants cash to help him pick the ring out, right? Meanwhile, Keisha's at the house packing up her bags because she finna get ready to go get cash and she finna dip, finna run off, wherever the hell she was finna run off to, right? Now, she's got the paper that she signed from the feds right there on the, on the little table so she can take that with her as she leaves out. And she puts a pistol in her purse. Tommy, the one that uh, Tommy gave her, right? Just then, Tasha comes beating at the door. Open up this door. I know you at home. I see your car outside. Keisha goes and opens up the door. Tasha busts in there. I know your ass been talking to the feds. You need to keep my son's name out of your mouth. Keisha, like, I ain't been talking to the feds about nothing. I didn't tell him nothing. That's why I have a plan. I'm finna leave. I'm finna get cash, and I'm finna leave. She's like, Tasha, you know I'm not no snitch. I've been riding for you this whole time. I ain't never said nothing to nobody about nothing. Just then, Tasha sees the paper that she signed by the feds, and she like, oh, and then she sees her bags packed. She like, oh, yeah? So you already got a plan, huh? So you was finna dip on my son and not be his alibi? For real? She was like, uh-uh. I think I'm going to keep your ass here. We're going to talk this shit out once Tommy gets here, right? Just as she's saying that, Keisha kind of looking at the side towards her purse because she knows she got that pistol in her purse. Tasha looking at Keisha. Tasha say, what you got in that purse, Keisha? Just then, baby, Keisha takes off running towards that purse. Tasha takes off running after her. Finally, they end up getting into a fight, a fight they should have got into a long time ago. Tasha got to the purse at first. She got the gun out and was getting ready to shoot at that goddamn Keisha. Somehow or another, Keisha got close. She swung the bag at Keisha. They fighting. They both end up getting the gun. They tossing over the gun, and for a minute, it looked like it's pointed up on Tasha. Tasha got the strength of 10 men, baby. The gun is out of place. Next thing you know, you hear it, pop. Then you see Keisha. <sighs> <sighs> Fall into the goddamn flow. Baby, next thing you know, Keisha begging for her life. She like, Tasha, no, please, think of cash, think of cash, no, please, no. Baby, just then, I guess I must have uh, rushed through Tasha mine. Bitch, if I let you live, you gonna get all of us and goddamn locked up, bitch, you can't take it. Baby, pop, one to the dome. Keisha is out. And now y'all look, okay, we all know we wanted it to happen, but when it happened, how did y'all feel? Was you happy or was you like, damn? Or was you like, oh, she did it? Because I know I was like, damn, she really did it. I thought Tommy was going to end up being the one that killed her. Or maybe even Ghost. Would have never thought it would have been a Tasha. Baby, Tasha didn't drop a tear, though. She looked sad, but she didn't drop a tear. She grabbed them fed papers, took the gun, and ran up out of them. Baby, just then, Tommy and Cash pull up to the house. Tasha's already gone. 
Cash got the flowers because they both finna go in and he finna ask her to marry her, right? Soon as they getting ready to walk in, Cash forgets the flowers in the car, so he run back to get the flowers out the car. Just then, Tommy sees that the door is cracked halfway open. He sees that something ain't right. He walks up, looks through the window, sees Keisha laid out dead on the floor. Tells Cash to go back in the car. I think I want to do this part by myself. Cash looking all sad and shit, but I'm thinking, little nigga, he trying to save you. He trying to save your ass of PTSD. Baby, Tommy goes in, closes the door behind him. That was so goddamn sad. He just fell to his knees, tears flowing down his eyes. Tommy can't keep a bitch for nothing. Either he kill him or they end up getting killed. Y'all, and that was the end of the episode right there. Keisha dead. Somebody died every episode. Keisha dead, y'all. She dead. R.I.P. Keisha. We knew you weren't built for this life any damn way. Y'all, this episode was good, okay? Now, if there was anything that I missed, please do not hesitate to drop it down below and let me know. Please don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and share. And Auntie Mo will see y'all in the next video. Peace out. What's up, y'all? Do me a favor and share the video. Please make sure to subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you think and um, hit that notification button so you will be up to date when I upload my latest videos. Ahala.